Part two of the exercises that you might be doing wrong at Fit Club. I'm gonna show you how to do the most used rope exercises properly so that you don't get low back pain. All right, the battle ropes. I'm gonna show you a couple exercises that most people do wrong and I want you to do them right so that we're getting the most out of it and you're not gonna get injured. So right away, these ropes are gonna be outstretched. Now, when the ropes are outstretched, it kind of makes it an awkward thing for you to do them properly because the tension is being pulled back and opposed to the ropes being lifted up and down. So when you're doing a battle rope, you want to create some type of slack and you'll feel it. If, it's, if you feel like you're getting pulled back, that means you're too far back. And I see some people doing it like this. What you want to do is get over top of it, get it nice and close, and you want to be able to have a natural swing when it comes to the ropes. Now, when it comes to your body mechanics, again, we see a lot of people hunching over and they just want to get it over with, right? We don't want that. We want to have proper form. If you do proper form, it's actually easier and you're going to get more calorie burn out of it. So the same thing. If I'm here, all I got to do is stand up. I can go chest up, chest back, shoulders back, get down to that squat position just like we would at the kettlebells. And now you're in the most strong is position that you can possibly do any type of exercise. Okay, so that's positioning when it comes to the rows. Now there's a couple different exercises that we do here, and so I'm gonna show you how to do it. We do the up and overs, okay, with the ropes. So when you say hold the handles up, this is what I mean. Whereas most people are holding them down, which is, I guess this is the normal, this is what we typically do, but sometimes we say hold the ropes up, and what you wanna do is grab it just on the bottom, right where the rope is and where the handle is. You wanna grab it too high and you don't wanna grab it too low. You wanna grab it right where the two ends meet, okay? Now when you're going up and over, again, if you're back here, you're not really doing anything because the weight of the rope isn't into the center. So you need to walk up and you need to step up and when you're swinging, you wanna try and make it a full body motion. So most people just kinda of work through their arms, which is planting your knees could cause an injury if you start to rotate into those knees. So what you wanna do is bend them and you wanna go side to side and use that body. Now which, which muscle groups are you working when it comes to that? This is like a trunk twist, so you're working your abs, but at the same time, you're working your arms because it's moving the ropes and you're using your legs to toss that rope side to side. So it's actually a full body. You got your lower body that's generating power. The power is then transferred to your abs, which is a core exercise. And then your arms are the last things to do the whipping motion. So you'd think, well, my arms are the one doing the motion, but it's not. It's actually your legs, okay? So if you ever watch tennis players, all the power is generated through the legs and it just transfers to the upper body. So that's the up and over. The other exercise right here is a reverse circle. Now with the reverse circle, again, if you're too far back, you're not gonna get the same effect, okay? So you wanna step in. So these lines are here. You should always be in these lines with whatever exercise you're doing so that there's some slack in the ropes and you're actually getting the proper workout from this. Now with these, you're working your rear delts, okay? So your shoulders are moving. So if you're swing, swimming, you wouldn't just swing through your elbows or swimming, you wouldn't just swim through your elbows. You'd swing through your shoulders, but this time, we're almost doing like a backstroke, but we're going outwards, okay? So imagine you're sitting on a tube, okay? You're sitting on a tube, your chest would be up, you'd be relaxing in the tube, inner tube, and you're just paddling the water backwards. And you should be able to make little circles with that rope to properly work those rear shoulders and into the traps. And another one is the big slams, okay? So if we're doing a big slam and it's making a bunch of noise, that just means that you have too much tension on the ropes going back this way. That much noise means that it's too easy, okay? That's novice. So if you're looking to go more advanced and you actually wanna work muscle groups, then you gotta get in nice and close and make it harder on yourself where all the weight is on the back of the rope and you gotta be able to lift that rope. So a big slam should be nice and close to the wall and then you gotta pick it up, right? You gotta be able to pick up that rope. And the closer that you go to the wall, the harder the exercise is, the more muscle you're gonna build and the more calories that you're gonna burn. So to recap, being back here, we don't wanna be in this zone. We don't want our feet past this line. We always wanna be inside the line. The closer you are to the wall, the harder the exercise, the more muscle you're gonna build, the more calories you're gonna build. When it comes to technique, never get lazy. Always start with the shoulders back and the chest up. Whatever exercise you're doing shouldn't matter. You should always be 
into that position. You see how I just transitioned into three different exercises? And if you do that, you're gonna make the most out of the ropes. So the next time that you use the battle ropes, let's make sure that the shoulders are back, the chest is up, we're in front of that line, and we're getting the most out of each and every workout.